Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. A couple of years ago I did an instruction video for how to play Alter Bridge's Watch Over You, an acoustic version that Miles Kennedy does uh, on lots of radio shows and YouTube channels and that he does often when, he, when they're playing live. Um, it's off the Blackbird album and Blackbird has become uh, since probably one of my all-time favorite rock albums, if not my all-time favorite rock album. It's, it's just superb, recommend it to anybody. Uh, I guess if you're here looking at this, you know Alter Bridge, so I don't need to tell you how good Blackbird is. Um, but that video has got a ton of views and it's got a ton of really good comments coming back. So thank you so much for all of the views and for all of the appreciation you're showing. A few people have commented on that video um, asking if I could do an instruction video for Wonderful Life. So that's what this is all about. I've pieced this together from several videos that they've done uh, where they're playing the song acoustically, either Miles Kennedy on his own or with Tremonti playing it as a duo. And as is often the case when guys do this, um, Kennedy has a habit of playing things slightly differently on different performances. So sometimes he'll put in a particular little run and on the next performance it won't be there. Um, and then when they're playing together, uh, Kennedy and Tremonti play slightly different voicings for, for, for much of the chords. Obviously just, to, you know, two, two acoustic guitars together. They're playing slightly different voicings to give it more color, more depth, more energy, all of that sort of stuff. So I've pieced this together from all of those performances. So it may not be the case that the way I'm showing you is exactly the way Kennedy plays it the whole way through from front to back on a single performance. But it'll all be there somewhere, and as is always the case, my view is that I'll give you enough to go away and learn how to play the song, and then learn how to play it yourself to suit your voice, your story, your performance, the way you want to play stuff. I'm a firm believer in making other people's songs, if you're playing other people's songs, making them your own in your own way. So this will give you a, a good start to show that. So I'm not going to go through every single strumming pattern and exactly what he does in that bar and exactly whether downstrokes, upstrokes, none of that. Um, I'll leave you to figure that out for yourselves. So I'll tackle this in a few different sections. I'll go through, first of all, the, uh, the tuning and a couple of comments on some of the voicings that he is using and, and what the effects of those are. Then I'll go through the, the intro, which is also the verse, uh, finger pattern. Then he gets into strumming for the pre-chorus. Uh, then there's a chorus. Then there's an instrumental break, uh, which also uh, doubles up as the ending, the outro, if you like. Uh, and then there's the chorus. So I'll break it down into those sections and uh, see if I can put it together as quickly as possible for you. So as with Watch Over You, this song is an open G chord tuning, a G major. So it's tuned so that when you play all of the strings together, you get a G major chord. And the way to do that is to take the E string at the bottom and lower it a full tone to a D. Take the A string and lower it a full tone to a G. Leave the D string. Leave the G alone. Leave the B alone. And then lower the top E string, the first string, to a D, a full tone. I could probably be tuned slightly better, but it's cold in here. Um, what that allows you to do is to play major chords with one finger, or if you're playing a G, play it particularly open. Or, or, so if you wanted to play a C chord, for example, the, the four chord, put your first finger across all six strings on the fifth fret. If you want to play a D, go to the seventh fret. If you wanted to play an A, go to the second fret, and so on and so forth. That's actually not what he does at all. When he changes to a C chord or a C voiced chord, a C based chord, what he does um, is he will put his finger on the fifth fret on the fifth string, which is your C note. And then he'll also put his finger on the fifth fret on the second string, which is an E. And then there's an open G in there. So there's your C major triad. But you've also got a D there, which at the top would give it, make it a, a C add nine chord, for example. But there's also a D here in the middle. And piano players will be familiar with adding a D in the middle of a chord, making it a, a, a C sus two, for example. So you've got a C with a couple of Ds over the top. And then of course, there's the D at the bottom here. If you play it all six strings with just those two fingers down, you get this. 
So it's for me with three D notes in there. That's quite messy, quite confused. So what I tend to do is block a couple of them out. And depending on how I'm playing it or how I'm feeling or whatever, I'll block different ones out. Sometimes it'll be intentional, sometimes less so. Mostly what I do is I take out this one by blocking it with a thumb or I block it by leaning my second finger into the sixth string and I'll just block that bottom D out. So that's a much cleaner kind of chord. What I'll sometimes do is I'll block the top one with my index finger. So you get the C with the D in the middle of the chord, the sus2, and sometimes I will lean my second finger back against that D note. So now you're just getting a C chord, C with the D on top, C with the D in the middle on top, that sort of thing. So lean in, to the, to the D string and block it, or lean against the sixth string to block the D at the bottom, that sort of thing. So if you then move that up two frets to the seventh, you get a D major chord. And again, what I do is I'll block out the bottom one, or I'll block out the D in the middle, uh, because there are just too many D notes in there, and for me that's 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 too again it woolly and slightly confused sound. Where if you block a couple of them, you get a fewer strings ringing, but you get a cleaner sound. So generally speaking, that's what I'm doing the whole way through in terms of the tuning and the voicing. Wherever I'm playing, I'm leaning against different strings and playing. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to talk about whether that's a C add 9 or a C sus 2 or whether this is an A7 add 9 or an A13 or any of that sort of stuff. I'm talking about C type chords, D type chords, A type chords, E minor type chords, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to know exactly what those chords are uh, from, from a theory, theoretical point of view, once you've got the fingerings, you can then figure out what the six notes that are being played are and then you can go and figure out what those chords are for yourself. Good learning if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, just put your fingers where I show you to put your fingers and you'll get the basic chord and you'll be able to play the song, which is what this video is all about. So the introduction and the verse are almost the same. And I'll show you the slight variation when we get there. What I'm going to do is count the song as though it's made up of bars of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's probably in six, eight time. One, two, three, four, five, six, or one, uh, two, uh, and one, and uh, something like that. Um, but in order to be able to construct it and show you exactly what I'm doing, I'm gonna break it down into counts of three or bars of three notes. So we've got one, two, That's your basic intro, again, broken down into counts of three. The key thing to say is that for every one of the bars, every one of the three counts, the picking pattern is exactly the same, except for one. So I'll show you the picking pattern that's used almost all the way through, and then we'll come to the, the difference in a bit. The first chord is a G chord, G major chord. So if you put your second finger, fifth string, 12th fret, third finger, second string, 12th fret, you're not playing the rest of the thing, you're just picking those two and the top string. You may use your thumb to use to play the bass note, and you and use either your second and third finger in the classical way, or your first and second finger on the first two strings, or maybe just one finger on the first two strings. I use a pick, I use hybrid picking, so I use a pick for the root notes. Uh, because when I get into the strumming part, I want to be able to use the pick for the strumming. Uh, I, don't, I can't strum very well with my fingernails. I tend to break my nails. So I have to have the pick in my hand. So I use hybrid picking for this bit. So I'm picking the bass notes with the pick and I'm picking the first and second string either with my second and third fingers or just with my second finger. Um, I didn't really decide, I let my fingers choose. You may have to work on which, which finger is picking which string. I just let my own fingers decide, depending on how much they've had to drink and what mood they're in. Um, so the picking pattern for the whole section, the bass note is playing the whole way through. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's not changing. No breaks, no variations on the beat, every beat on the on, on the root note. Up the upper strings are playing on the first beat, not on the second beat, on the gap between the second and the third beat, but not on the third beat. So you're getting one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So together they sound one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So you're picking the second string on the first note, and then on the two and, you're picking the first string open. And that's what he's doing almost all the way through, except for one bar, one three count. Um, so practice that on that open, on that on that G chord for a, a little while until your fingers have gotten used to how you're going to play that. Okay. So that's the first bar three count. One, two, three. The second three count puts your little finger on the thirteenth fret exactly the same picking pattern and then for the third bar move your second finger down to the 11th fret put your index finger on the second string on the 10th fret and then as you pick the first beat of the bar hammer on to the 12th fret with your little finger so that hammers on on the one and and then the same picking pattern, nothing's changed on your, on your, on your right hand. Or on your picking hand for, for uh, left-handed guitar players. So the first couple of counts go. And then in the fourth count, we get to where things change slightly. The root note is still playing on the three beats of the bar. What you do is you lean your second, your index finger rather across the first and second strings on the 10th fret. Your second finger stays where it is. And then you're picking the little finger or the third finger, little finger is easier for me, third finger on the 12th fret. Then lift it off so that you're picking the 10th fret with your index finger. Then your little finger on the 12th fret on the second string. So instead of playing the half beat between two and three, you're playing on the one, two, three with the top strings as well. So the first four measures are hammer on, pick, pick, pick. And then the fifth measure, you're sliding this shape, your first and second fingers, down to the ninth and eighth frets. You're still on the fifth and second strings, but down to the ninth and eighth frets. And then back to that normal picking pattern that you're playing for the rest of the of the of the of the phrase. So from here, the sixth measure, take your index finger and slide it back one fret, leaving your second finger where it is. Now that's a slightly dissonant chord, uh, but that's what he does. I prefer if he did that, but okay, he doesn't. He leaves the second finger where it is, and moves the index finger back to the seventh fret. Same picking pattern. And then for the next measure, we're moving that shape, which again is a bit of a stretch, down so that your index finger is on the second string on the third fret, your second finger is on the fifth fret now. And then again, we're hammering on after the first pick. Little finger on to the second string, fifth fret. Same picking pattern. And then for the next measure in the intro, he takes his in little finger off and plays that chord. But in the verse itself, when he's singing, he leaves his little finger where it is and plays two measures of that. So that's the difference between the intro and the... Uh, and again, in one or two performances, even in the verse, he takes his little finger off, possibly because he's hung over and his little finger is a bit tired. Um, so the whole phrase, nice and slow. Pick, 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 stretch. 
hammer on. Lift off. Okay? And then repeat that for the verse. But again, when you get to that last edge. Leave the little finger on the fifth fret on the second string. The pre-chorus, we're getting into the strumming part. And the first chord is an E minor shape, an E minor type chord. And it's a bit of a stretch, uh, so you may need to, to, to spend a little bit of time getting accurately to it. We're starting off with our second finger. I'll switch my second finger now to the second string on the third fret. First finger is on the sixth string on the second fret, and my little finger is over on the fourth fret on the fifth string. So it's an E minor type chord. And we do that for two measures of three. One, two, three, two, two, three. Okay? And that's in the so much love, so excuse my voice, and then for the next two measures, we're taking the index and the little finger and moving them both down one string. So your index finger goes to the second fret on the fifth, and your little finger goes to the fourth fret on the fourth string. Your second finger stays where it is. So again, two measures of one, two, three, two, then switch down a string. And then for the next, we're moving to an, a C type chord. So as I spent in the intro, your second finger on the fifth string, fifth fret, third finger on the second string, fifth fret. And you might want to lean your second finger against either of those two D notes either side of it, either kill the sixth string or kill the fourth string or kill both of them. Hold that for four measures. So from the top of the that, that pre-chorus section. So much love to say. Okay. Now the second time he goes through uh, in the second verse and the pre-chorus for the second chorus, when he gets to that C chord. He plays it for one measure, and then he does a little bit of a run that sounds like... Okay, so that run, sometimes he plays it, by the way, um, the first time around, but in most of the performances I've seen, he only plays it the second time around. So what it is, is you move up, you move both of those uh, fingers up to the seventh fret, and then you move your fifth string up to the ninth and drop your index finger onto the eighth fret on the second string and then back so that's a c d e minor c and you just do that on beats one two three and then back to the c chord on the fifth fret one two three one two three one two three one okay so from the top, that pre-chorus goes, and I'll put in that second verse break. So we're from here. Two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three. Break. Back to the same chord. Same chord, second time around. And then for the last two measures, we go to an A. So leave your index finger where it is on the second fret and then lift your little finger away and slide that second finger back to the second fret. Okay, and again, you might wanna lean your finger against the fourth string to kill it, to get your proper A7, or open it up, and you get a modified A7 chord, which gives you a little bit more I guess, I don't know, depth, mud, feeling, whatever it is that you want to do. So sometimes I leave it in, sometimes I take it out. Okay, so you've gone to that A chord, A7 chord at the end, just before you move into the verse. 
So we play that pre-chorus again one more time slowly. So we're going from this stretchy chord, drop it a string, go to the C, and then the run, back to the C, back to the stretchy chord. Drop your string and then the A7. And hold that for four measures. And then we're into the chorus. The chorus starts on a C chord, which we've played before. That's on the fifth fret, on the fifth string and the second string. So do that for two measures. Then for the third measure, go to a, an open G chord. And then for the fourth measure, we're doing a, a, a run that takes us from the G chord across an F sharp bass into the E minor in the next measure. So the way he does that is sometimes he will just play the fourth uh, fret on the sixth string. So you've got that C chord, G. You can hear that note ringing out and sometimes more often he'll do it not just on that note but he'll do it on the fourth string as well that gives you an octave so it's a much stronger try that again without the mistake and then we're into the E minor stretchy chord before, so we've got the second fret on the sixth string, the third fret on the second string, and the fourth fret on the fifth string. Okay, so from the top. Wonderful life for as long as you've been and for the next couple of measures, we're back to the C chord. And then we stay on the C chord. Same run on the and then the last chord we go to a D so it's the fifth string second string on the seventh fret okay the first time through the verse or sorry the first time through the chorus he holds that and then pauses and then we get back into the picking for the second verse. So we run through that from the start. One, two, three, two. What a wonderful life For as long as you've been at my side And I want you to know I'll miss you so Okay. And that's it, except it's not quite it, because as usual, he has a little run in there which adds a little bit of flavor and it's a lovely little thing. So when you come out of the C chord, two measures, and you'll go into the G chord, the first thing he does on the first beat of that is he puts his second finger, or first finger, whichever, finger down on the third string, second fret, Hit that on the first beat and then on the one and slide it up to the fourth fret. Okay. So it's a lovely little extra flavor, a little bit of extra run, a little bit of extra movement in there. If you're not quite accurate with it, you can mess it up. It sounds horrible on the wrong string. Um, so you don't need to do it. You can leave it out and just play the G chord. And that works absolutely fine, but if you can do... Sounds lovely, okay? That's the only variation in the chorus. Do it with or without, and the chorus is that simple. Second time round, he leaves... plays through the four measures on the D chord, and then goes back and repeats I'll come to that in just a second. So the instrumental break is pretty simple. 
Getting the rhythm of it accurately uh, is a little bit trickier, but let's just play it through nice and slowly. We're starting off with our, I use my second and third fingers on the second fret, sixth and fourth strings. Now, your fingers don't move from those strings uh, and they stay together on the same frets the whole way through the run. Uh, so we go from the, we're counting in threes, one, two, three, on the, first beat of the next bar slide up on the one and to the fourth fret slide then up to the fifth fret and then on the next measure on each of the three beats we're moving one three so you've gone one two three So you're going from the fifth to the seventh to the ninth fret on each of the beats in that bar. Tricky part um, and the thing that uh, you might find yourself doing is when you get to the fifth fret, you might want to start moving away from it on the first beat of the next bar a little bit too early. That's the kind of instinctive thing to do. You're moving, you want to move again. Stay on the fifth fret for the last measure for the full measure and then for the first beat of the next measure as well. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then up to the 11th fret. One, two, three. And then on the first beat of the next bar, again, we're staying on the 11th, but then sliding and we're sliding all the way three frets up to the 14th fret. Holding that for the three count and then back to the tenth fret. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then on the next measure, we're sliding again from the tenth to the ninth to the seventh fret. Again, we're staying here, don't move away. Having played that full measure, one, two, three, and then back again and just repeat. One, two, three, 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 one, two, slide. Hold and one, two, three. And then we're into the bridge. So the bridge starts on, again, another bit of a stretchy chord. First finger, second string, first fret. Uh, second finger up on the sixth string, third fret. And your third finger on the fourth string, third fret. Play that for one measure. One, two, three. Sorry, two measures, I beg your pardon. Play that for two measures. Then keeping your index finger where it is, slide your second and third finger back to the second fret. Play that for two measures, then the open G chord for two measures. Then go to the D, which is the seventh fret, fifth and second string. Then back to the same stretchy chord, two measures, second chord, two measures, then open G for one measure and then we get into the there's a little nice little bit of a run there but the timing of it is a bit tricky to get your head around the first time you go so we'll play through that again slowly one two three two three open G then up to the D chord seventh fret back, repeat, slide back, open G for one measure, one, two, three, one. okay, so we'll split that into two measures, and the first measure is really simple, you're playing one, then on the second fret, third string, two, move it up to the fourth string, three, and then on the second measure, one, two, one, two, and. So you're moving it to the fifth fret for the first beat, and then on the two and, 
moving it back to the fourth fret. One, two, and. One, two, and. And again, if you emphasize that upstroke on the two and, you really ring that note out. One, two, three, one, two, and. And then on the first measure, first beat of the next measure, move it back to the second. And again on the two and, lift it off and emphasize the upstroke. One, one, two, and. So the whole, the, the full run is one, two, three, one, two, and, one, two, and. So the four bars together with the open G chord for the first measure and then we go into the run. Nice and slow. One, two, three, two, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and. One, two, and. And you're back into that stretchy chord for the, set, the, the next set of, or the next phrase. So again, one, two, three, two, two, three. One, two. Carry on, two measures of that, then repeat. Okay, so the second time through, after we've done that little run, we'll go back to the same chords, move it back to the second fret, two open Gs, two, three, back to the B, sorry, the D for two measures on the seventh fret. Then back here, same thing again, then we go straight to the D on the seventh fret. Three, two, three, three, two, three, four. One, two, three, two, three. So you've got effectively eight counts on that seventh fret D chord. Play through seven of the bars on the seventh one, hold it and then hold the silence and then he goes back into the quiet chorus. So once we finished that bridge section and we paused on the seventh fret D shape, played it through for seven measures and then paused for the eighth one, we go back into a quiet chorus and then a loud chorus and we get out of the loud chorus into the instrumental section, the, the repeat for the outro. Um, there's nothing new here, there's nothing different from anything that we've already covered. So I'll just go through it and just call it just how to put it together and how to when to get out of the, the chorus and into the instrumental section. So we play through it starting off with two measures on the fifth fret, that C shape. One, two, three, two, three. Wonderful life For as long as you've been at my side Now I want you to know Back to the D Four measures get lighter. Now go from here to A7 for four measures. And we're into the instrumental. And we're gonna do it twice. And the second time through, Slow down. And when you get back to the 10th fret, he ends that on a big sweeping upstroke. So you're playing the chord effectively from the high notes to the, to the low notes. So again. Slowing down. Big note, lots of vibrato, shake the guitar back and forward for effect. And that's the whole song. So hopefully that's given you enough to put it all together. Uh, if you've got any questions or any problems, drop me a comment in the comments below and I'll get back to you on them. Um, I hope that's useful to you. And if it is, and you want me to do a video on something else, another Alter Bridge song or anything else that you can think of, drop me a note in the comments and I will certainly do my best to give it a go. Thanks very much guys.